Hello. Today we are going to start chapter 14, which focuses on assets and bases. So we're going to look at section 1 through 3, um, just looking at some of the introduction to acid and base reactions. Acids are generally considered to be components that are sour. Um, the citric acid is contained in oranges and grapefruit and other fruits that are sour. Uh, bases are known to be slippery and bitter, so a lot of cleaning solutions uh, are strong bases. So there are a couple different ways to look at acids and bases. The first one is the Arrhenius concept, and he was the first guy who kind of looked at acids and bases. And so his concept says that acids produce H plus ions in aqueous solution, and that bases produce OH minus ions. The problem with this is that we're limited to aqueous solutions and only bases that contain the OH minus ion, and some bases don't contain OH minus ions, but are still considered bases. Another model, and a more one that we use more readily in chemistry, is the Bronsted-Lowry model. This says that the acid is a proton donor, so donates H pluses, and that the base is a proton acceptor or accepts H pluses. So, for example, if we look at HCl dissolving in water, the HCl donates an H plus or a proton, and the water accepts it. And so this causes the formation of what's called the hydronium ion, which is H3O plus 1. So let's look at that reaction. So we have, in general, some acid, so here is our, the other part of our acid, and water producing our hydronium ion, and then A minus. So this would be considered our acid. Water in this case is our base. And then we have what's called the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. Okay, so the conjugate base is what's left of the acid after its proton is lost. So we took HA, which was our acid, and once it donated the H+, now all we're left with is A-, minus, and that's called the conjugate base. The conjugate acid is formed when the proton is transferred to the base. So the base accepted the proton, and now it became H3O plus 1. Okay, so we have what are called conjugate acid-base pairs. These are the two substances that are related to each other due to the donating and accepting of the proton. And so our two pairs are the HA and the A-, minus and the H2O and the H3O plus because they are either donating and accepting or uh, accepting and then, you know, becoming the H3O plus. Okay, so just like we had K sub C, which was the equilibrium constant in terms of concentration, and K sub P, which was the equilibrium constant in terms of pressure, we can also look at what's called the acid dissociation constant, which is K sub A. So between the two bases, water and A minus, there's competition for the protons. And so depending on which one is the stronger base, that's going to determine the shift of equilibrium and which base gets the proton. So if water is the stronger base, then that means that it has a greater affinity for protons. It wants them more. And so this means that the equilibrium position is far to the right because water is going to take those protons so most of the acid is going to be ionized. So for example, HCl will break up into H plus and Cl minus. And then the water will accept the proton. If A minus is the stronger base, then that means equilibrium is going to lie far to the left with the reactants. And most of the acid present will stay as H sub A because the water is not strong enough to accept the H plus ions. And so we can write the case of A value um, as here's our uh, reactant and here's our products. Now we're not considering water because water is a liquid and we only want to look at aqueous or gaseous components. Okay? And so you'll notice that we can write H3O plus as H plus. Okay? Well, H3O plus and H plus are considered hydrated protons. So, okay, so here we have um, H3O plus and H plus being the same. Basically, we will use H plus more often, but just remember that it is actually bonded to a water molecule, giving it this H3O plus, which is why we consider it to be hydrated. So let's look at an example. So 
Let's write the simple dissociation or ionization reaction and get rid of water for each of the following acids. So let's look at acetic acid. So we're going to take our acetic acid and show how it would dissociate. Okay, well that H plus is going to come off, leaving the C2H3O2 minus ion on its own. Okay, let's look at another one. We've got the ammonium ion. Okay, and one of the hydrogens is going to come off of that, leaving NH3. And you'll notice no charge here because when you took off one of the H pluses, now it became NH3. All right, well, we said that we could look at, you know, we didn't want to include water because it was liquid. And we've been looking at mainly aqueous things, so let's look at the gas phase. Okay, so bronsted lowry will also work in the gas phase, so we have NH3 plus HCl goes to NH4Cl, and the proton is donated by the HCl, and it goes to the NH3. So if we looked at that in terms of Lewis structures, we have the NH3 plus the HCl, and that's going to NH4, which is existing as an ion. So H, H, I don't leave much room for my H there. And that's a plus one. And then we've got our Cl minus one. Okay, so we've got a donation of the proton. Okay, this is not, would not be considered um, an SFH reaction according to the Arrhenius concept because we don't have that OH minus B.